What was the rationale for Hamas's attack on October 7th? Was it because they sensed that there was a burgeoning peace between Saudi Arabia and Israel? And they wanted to torpedo that. They wanted to torpedo the Abraham Accords. The Jihad didn't want to see Israel normalized in the region. That could be. Could it be because they sensed that there's an American president in the White House that was more favorable to their perspective and certainly on American campus and American support? And so therefore, while this president was still in power, this was the time to do it? Could be. Or was it because they looked at Israel's uh, infighting because of judicial reform and the protests in the street? They sensed that Israel's uh, internal political makeup, its sociological makeup was in distress, and therefore they chose that time to strike? That could be as well. But CBS has an amazing story right now, which I like so much. This is like one of my favorite news pieces in, in a long time. And it, it's about something completely different that may have triggered this war. And that trigger may have been the red heifers and the fear that Hamas has that Israel and the Jewish people are intending to build the third temple. I like this story so much. Let's take a look at CBS and how they covered it. The infamous October 7 massacre that sparked a war. But one confounding yet eye-opening motive has escaped the headlines. In a recent speech, a Hamas spokesman blamed the Jews for bringing red cows to the Holy Land. The cows he's talking about at a secure, undisclosed location are these, red heifers to be precise. Some Jews and Christians believe they're the key to rebuilding the historic Jewish temple in Jerusalem and to beckoning the Messiah. To understand... You All right, so we got these red cows. They're in the land of Israel. And we'll see in a second that they flew in from Texas to the land. And this may have triggered uh, the October 7th war. Let's keep going. You have to go back nearly 2,000 years when the ancient Romans destroyed the last temple in the city. To rebuild it, these believe... The last temple, by the way, is the second temple. And I like that CBS at least admits that there were there was a Jewish temple in Jerusalem. They didn't make it clear that there was two Jewish temples, that we had two different uh, sovereignties, two different uh, commonwealths uh, here in, in Eretz Israel, in the land of Israel, and capital was Jerusalem. But good, okay, we're getting somewhere. At least we're finding out that Jews are indigenous to the land of Israel. They're from Judea. We had temples here. Good, okay, let's keep going. Beavers point to the Bible's Book of Numbers. It commands the Israelites to sacrifice a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. But first thing, can I just mention how they're showing this? Look at this, like, look at this, like, paper that they're putting this verse on. Well, guess what? This The verse was not written in English, and it was not, like, on a piece of paper that looks like a Hallmark card, and it didn't have a church background. It was written three and a half thousand years ago. It was given to the Jewish people in Sinai. We're still writing it on ink, using ink, on parchment. And so it has Hebrew letters and it's parchment. We're still reading that same language that we have in the Bible is the same language that we're speaking today. And so I just want to say it doesn't look that, like that. It doesn't look like a, a Hallmark postcard and a Christmas thing going on. No, that's not where it's from. Only then can the temple rise again. Caring for them on an Israeli settlement in the West Bank. Ooh, ooh where, where exactly? An Israeli settlement? In the West Bank, you mean a Jewish community in Judea, where we're from, where we were from? This is a Jewish settlement in the West Bank. Sounds ominous. I think it's actually just Jews living in their homeland. It's actually not so ominous. But hey, you know, that's the way that's the way the folks in the West are speaking these days. Is Yitzhak Mamo. So we have here, uh, after a long research, we find in uh, Texas. In Texas? Uh, yeah, yeah. Texas, United States of America. Texas Red Angus flying them 7,000. I just want to say there's a what, 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 what is called what my friends in Texas call the Israel Texas Nexus. That's right. There's something about Texas. Cool things come out of Texas. And I, I'll tell you the truth. That's it's the other Lone Star State. And, and there's a lot of good energy between Texas and Israel. We got to keep developing that energy, actually. Uh, we got to make that even bigger. But anyway, these red heifers flew from Texas to the land of Israel. Thousand miles to Israel. This is not they a were publicity moved. stunt. Well, what do you mean? Meaning, this is something you take very seriously. Harry Potter is a good story. The Bible is not story. The Bible is a way of God to lead us. A massive altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. 
According to some believers, the ceremony needs to be performed right here on the Mount of Olives, looking directly into where the temple once stood. But something else now stands in its place. Well, before we get to that, I just want to say something about the red heifer. It's not that the red heifer is this thing that magically leads to the temple. That's that's a total misunderstanding. The red heifer has got a very specific goal. It's got a specific job. And that is, this is very exciting what I'm about to say, to rid Jews of the energy of death, uh, of, um, of ritual impurity associated with touching something that died, that is dead. Uh, and death is an energy in this world. It's, it's one of the most powerful energies in this world. It's an energy that takes down all things. Uh, but the Jewish people are an anomaly. They continue to survive throughout the ages. And what symbolizes that more than anything is the red heifer, because it's a way to get rid of that energy of death and to keep going throughout the generations. And that's, that's, that's one of the most amazing things about the Jewish people and a real testament to God's existence. So there's the, uh, the red heifer's purpose. Uh, and that the, once you get rid of the energy of death, then you could approach the temple and have a temple and, and work in the temple because you're purified from the, the energy of death. But indeed, there is a different energy that's on the Temple Mount today, and it ain't a Jewish temple. Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, among the holiest sites in Islam. Today, only Muslims are allowed inside, but that's not stopping Jewish activists outside. Once you got, you started here. Well, just, just to make it clear, the Temple Mount is a big platform. In the heart of it is an area that was sanctified for the temple, and Jews are not, not allowed to walk into that sanctified platform. But around the Jews, indeed, do walk on the Temple Mount. And you'll see my good friend MJ uh, here being interviewed about her work to try to get Jews to come to the Temple Mount more often. Six days a week, Melissa Jane Kronfeld leads groups from around the world who defiantly pray, as close as armed guards permit. It's not about the destruction of Islamic holy sites. It's about preserving this place and being guardians over the house of God for all people. So you're happy with it where it is? No, it's going to go 100%, but I believe it's going it, to go. It's 100%, yeah. The whole thing is going to go. We have to build a temple. When you say that Dome of the Rock has to... So she's saying it's got to go, right? She means that we had a first temple, a second temple, there's going to be a third temple. Now, I'm not about to start World War III right here, okay? But but the point is very simple. We don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, but that's that spot that is being guarded, not by a mosque, but, but by a shrine called the Dome of the Rock, that spot marks where the Holy of Holies was and will be. How exactly that's going to happen, I don't know. But what Melissa and MJ is saying here is uh, that, that that's the place for the third temple. Again, I don't know how it's going to come about, but that's the spot. That's where it's going to be. That's been prophesied, uh, and that's what the Jews yearn for, yes. Uh, and so MJ says it kind of unequivocally uh, and, and without, without messing around. She says it clearly, that's the spot, and, and CBS is like incredulous. Go, MJ. It's hard for me to imagine something more incendiary. Well, let me ask you something. Well, it's incendiary that what? It's incendiary that we want a temple there? Go to India and check out what they're doing over there. They're, they have some, uh, uh, some, uh, some Indian sites, uh, some, some holy shrines that were taken over, Hindu shrines that were taken over by Islam. And then the Hindus came back and rebuilt those shrines in the very place where there was a, a Muslim shrine on top of their Hindu shrine. So it's not so incendiary. It, it becomes more incendiary when you make it out to be incendiary. But saying, hey, that's my property. I want it back. That's not so incendiary. The Middle East seems pretty destabilized right now. And the war, if I'm not mistaken, is already here. To be clear, hers is a dream not shared by the Israeli government or by the vast majority of Israelis and Jews. But it's been enough to incite numerous Islamist groups. Hamas has dubbed its October 7 assault on Israel the Al-Aqsa wave and has the Dome of the Rock on its emblem. But this is Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let's let's understand what, what was just said. The Jews getting excited about the Third Temple is incendiary. But Hamas's like overall goal to get rid of Israel and to take the Temple Mount and calling this whole war the Al-Aqsa flood is not as incendiary. The world kind of accepts that. I mean, they keep everything that they put out has the markings of 
uh, the the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but it's not really the mosque, it's actually the Dome of the Rock that they put on there. And they make that into the call for all their peoples throughout the world. That's the call of the jihad. So for them, it's like they're they're proverbially building a temple, right? They want to keep it an Islamic holy site and keep the Jews off of it. But when we say, actually, we want to do the same, and you say, I want it to be a Jewish site, and I don't want any jihadis there. Uh, uh, I want it to be a house of prayer for all nations, but I don't want haters to, to get a chance to go there. Well, that's very incendiary, right? Sacred ground to billions of Muslims globally, not just Hamas terrorists, stresses Imam Mustafa Abu Sway of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Al-Aqsa Mosque belongs to all Muslims. It belongs to all Muslims. Ta-da! Because they captured it in the 600s and then lost control of it, and then captured it again around in, in the 13th century. It belongs to all Muslims. But the what about belonging, the stuff that belonged beforehand? Who did it belong to? Who did you take it away from? Maybe those people are back. Well, they are back, right? So it doesn't exactly belong to all Muslims. Now, that doesn't mean that Muslims shouldn't have a right to pray because, again, we believe that this place should be a house of prayer for all nations, as the, as the prophet Isaiah tells us. It's, it's, it's a site to connect to God. It is the spiritual capital of the world. But it's not an exclusive site against Jews. That's absurd. It's supposed to be a site that the Jews control and maintain and other nations come and connect to the God of Israel. Okay, But this dude does not see it that way. So you'll find reaction from Indonesia to Toronto to New York. That's really given. Al-Aqsa Mosque belongs to all Muslims, and the Muslims today are 2 billion people. Two billion people. Simply by performing... Ooh, don't scare me. You're 2 billion. We're just a measly 14 million. But you know, the Torah tells us, the Bible says that we're going to be the smallest of all nations. But you're still going to control the Temple Mount. I'm, I'm, listen, hey, respect. You got 2 billion respect you're winning it you're killing it out there you know that's 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 great but it doesn't mean it's yours it, it means that you've got a lot of people and you got mecca and medina and you got other holy places and i respect that but this spot is our spot okay and you're gonna have to respect that as well these acts are are these jewish activists kicking a hornet's nest they are have you ever seen have you ever seen a media like a like a bigger feed? It's like so what you're saying is they're kicking over a hornet's nest. Is that how you want to say it? Because I think it's a good way to say it. It's like it's like uh why don't you let the guy say it? Why don't you just not feed him your your lines, the his lines? Why don't you just you know let him say it his way? But like it's like so you were saying it would trigger World War Three, kicking over a hornet's nest because it upsets two billion Muslims? Well, tough nuggies. Okay, it's our land. It's our holy place. You're sitting on our holy place. And we know what you're doing. You're trying to do that specifically in order to undermine our claim. All right, let's see what he says. They are. A hornet's nest. They're kicking all the way to Capitol Hill. So good to see you here in the nation's capital. Those sacred cows were showcased in Washington at a recent prayer gathering. Many evangelicals believe these red heifers will usher Christ's second coming. We need the Messiah to come, right? So for me, the red heifer is red for the blood of Jesus Christ. Back in the West. Right, so I want to say something here. I want to say this gently and truthfully. We don't believe in that. We don't believe in, in the Christian theology and in the Christian texts, the so-called New Testament. Sorry, love you guys. I love my friends out there. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to accept those beliefs. I don't. The red heifer does not symbolize somebody else's gods or, or belief systems. No. It symbolizes Jewish purity, purifi purification from the energy of death. Uh, and and uh, the temple is a way to serve the God of Israel for all nations, as I said before. But it's not in order to replace Judaism uh, with another religion. And Christianity also was a supersessionist religion that came onto the scene in order to, to kind of replace Israel in their own words, and so too did Islam. So my friends that, that brought over uh, uh, the red heifers, they're amazing people, and all the people that, that love Israel throughout are amazing people, but we got to get educated. we got to get educated what the red heifers are really about, uh, what the Torah, what the Bible that talks about it uh, uh, is asking us to really do. And it's asking us to get closer to him, to the one God, who is the God of Israel uh, based in Jerusalem. In any case, back to the red heifers. Bank, Mamo says the ceremony could take place any day. But 
Can you understand why Hamas could be outraged by something like this? I cannot understand. I love, I love, again, it's like, it's like, it's like, I work for Hamas. I use the language that they want to, 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 to be said out there. What, what does it mean outraged? They're outraged at any Jewish people having control of the land of Israel. They're outraged at our control of Jerusalem, right? Uh, they're outraged. <laughs> what outrage? What's the outrage exactly? They hate us. They hate us. Today, Hamas, whatever their flag is, is, is the swastika of today. So, yeah, they're outraged. And they certainly don't want us to be moving forward. Moving forward. They don't want us to move forward. They want us to move backwards. They're trying to get us off of our land and out of Jerusalem. And we're not going to allow that to happen. And so here's another step forward. That even if they are right, why they have to slot and uh, rape people to win their war? Terrorists have been... What does that mean? I don't understand what he was saying there. The reason they slaughter and rape and kill is because that's how they want to win their war. I, res I respect that. Meaning to say I respect my enemy and what they're trying to do. They're trying to destroy the Jewish people in Israel. And so therefore they think they're right and they want us out. And it's a conflict. It's a war. People are like, why did Hamas do that? Because they're trying to kill us. Can we make it not so complex? Can we just simplify it for everybody? They're at war with us. War, it's ugly. It comes in different ways. Sometimes, you know, nice nations use incendiary bombs and, you know, light up whole cities. And other people use rape and, and, and pillaging. It's horrible things. They're all horrific things. But, like, that's what the bad guy wants to do. He wants to get rid of us. So don't be so, like, amazed by what, what does he want? Why would he want to do that? Because he's your enemy. Because he's your enemy. So keep it simple and, and we'll understand what we're doing. And of course, the red heifer, the, re, the real word is the red heifer was a trigger. That's the real, real world. Real word. That's the real word. It's a trigger. It triggered them because they're like, whoa, the Jewish people are moving forward. And so so what I said before, you know what, let's finish it up and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll make that analysis right at the end. Here. And attacking us before we ever dreamed of these cows, he reflects. They don't need them as an excuse to kill. For CBS Saturday Morning, Chris Livesay, Jerusalem. All right, so that's indeed true. They really don't need an excuse. And so remember the question that I asked in the beginning, what was the, what was the thing that caused Hamas to make this attack? Was it Biden in the White House? Was it a divided Israel? Was it the peace with Saudi Arabia? Those are all true. And the red heifers were a trigger. It triggered them. It triggered them to be like, whoa, the Jewish people are moving forward. They're moving forward with a temple in Jerusalem. They're moving forward with peace with Saudi Arabia. They're moving forward uh, uh, in, in, in strength and in numbers. It's growing nation and the economy's strong. We've got to strike right now. And we've got to bring them down so that they get off the Abraham Accords, get off that track. And we have uh, potentially in the White House and in Iran, all kinds of en uh, fr enemies of Israel and friends of theirs uh, that would aid them at this moment. Uh, and that's that's why the red heifers at the end was a trigger. And are they wrong? I don't think they're wrong. I think that the Jewish people wants to move forward. It wants to move forward. And the red heifers uh, are another sign of a redemptive period and a consciousness that's coming into the world. And Hamas is the anti of that. They want darkness in this world. They don't want God's light to shine from Jerusalem to this world. They want to subdue the world. In their mind, Islam means submitting, and submitting is like subduing. They want everybody to bow down and to put on the burqa and put on the, the hijab and all that stuff. They, 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 they want the whole world to go into their place of darkness. They don't want that light to come out of Jerusalem. So I thought this was a really fun uh, piece out of CBS. And it really, uh, what's fun about it also is that at least it breaks through that conception that it's all about like land and give me this piece of land and or give me these rights and equalities, the two-state solution, give me more uh, uh, freedom of movement and, and, and more welfare. What are, it's not about the money and it's not about the rights and it's not about the land. It's about God. It's about the temple. It's about Jerusalem. And at least that CBS got right, that it's about something much bigger here in the Middle East. All right, folks, you are watching uh, Yishai Fleischer TV. Thank you so much. Subscribe to our channel and uh, be part of... Uh, be part of this great and amazing process of redemption. Write me an email, Yishai, and at YishaiFleischer.com. God bless you wherever you are, and shalom.